We work on a lot of classic and American muscle cars here in the shop, and sometimes we put late model drive lines in the old cars, uh, but we also do work on late model high performance cars. So we have a 2008 Mustang GT California Special, uh, which is a GT with some nicer seats and stripe package. Uh, so it comes with the three valve 4.6 liter. Uh, it's got a five speed. The customer is a really cool guy who has done a few modifications to this car already, but like everything else, he always wants more, you know. We're all bitten by the horsepower bug. So this car came to us basically with its stock uh, 281 cubic inch 4.6 liter V8 under the hood. And we explored some avenues to be able to give him more power and uh, a little more rumble and some better ways to utilize all that power. We started the project by taking the car to our local dyno shop uh, at Larry's Electric and doing some baseline dyno runs to see how much power this thing was making as it sat from the factory. Uh, one of the things that's kind of frustrating about the Mustang is there's not a good way to get a tack signal. So unfortunately we didn't get any torque readings, but we did get 300 horsepower to the wheel, which is actually a little more than we expected to start with. To make this car even more fun, we can put a supercharger, headers, and a better center force clutch in it. Because of all the things we were doing with the car, we thought it would be best to kind of put some things together when it would be easiest because of processes in other places. Uh, so we started by pulling the intake off. Now this car is also as much about looking good as it is about going fast. So we took the opportunity to do some detail items under the hood. And the main thing is these engines are all aluminum, which looks great when the aluminum is new, but aluminum tends to oxidize pretty quickly, and then it starts to get that grainy, dingy kind of look. So on aluminum engines and parts, we've been using uh, Eastwood's ceramic high heat engine paint. It's really nice stuff, and we use an aluminum color, you know, so we clean them up and we respray them to make them look like fresh aluminum that'll never oxidize. To provide a little contrast to all that shiny silver paint, uh, we ordered a set of wrinkle black Ford Racing valve covers and then took a few minutes to detail the lettering. Our in-house pinstripe artist, JJ, was able to hand paint uh, the blue oval and the Ford Racing letters in a light blue color, uh, which goes with the Ford Racing theme and gives us, again, a little bit of contrast. We thought it would be best to do the clutch at this time because the intake manifold wasn't installed on the car, so we could rock the motor back without fear of hitting the firewall or the supercharger that we were installing later hitting the firewall. Uh, so at that point, we pulled the transmission and swapped out the uh, stock clutch and flywheel for the center force dual friction clutch and uh, light and flywheel. The biggest part of the project was the supercharger. Uh, Magnuson provides really great instructions uh, Every step's got pictures, it's got the size sockets you need, and a torque spec for every fastener. So there's almost no way to get lost or do something wrong with it. Uh, the most challenging thing really on installing the supercharger is doing the intercooler, because you've got to pull the grill and the bumper off and drill some holes and run a bunch of lines. But even that's really easy with the step-by-step -step instructions. Another thing to keep in mind is, although the overall installation of the supercharger is a one-man job, uh, when you physically lift the supercharger over the motor, it takes two people because it's pretty heavy and reaching across the fenders is difficult. And it's also possible for one person to pull the bumper and grill, but if you have a helper, it eliminates the possibility of scratching or cracking the bumper. The last thing we decided to do was to install a better exhaust system on the car. We started with a set of Cook's headers for a few reasons. One, they're made for the Mustang specifically. Uh, they're also stainless, and they're a nice long tube design, so they can take full advantage of the exhaust flow. Uh, Cooks also makes a new X-pipe with high flow cats that matches their headers, which bolts right in. So the package is pretty easy to install. And at the back of the car, uh, we got a set of MagnaFlow mufflers that were the same dimensions as the Ford Racing mufflers, and Adam welded them in and lined up the uh, exhaust tips. Magnuson provides you a new handheld SCT tuner to flash a new tune to the car. So you flash the new tune to the car, make sure all your connections are tight, turn the key, pressurize the fuel system, check for any leaks. If everything seems good, they ask you to start the car and run it for just a few seconds, make sure there's no weird noises, it starts up, doesn't have a misfire. Uh, then they ask you to check for codes. If everything's all right, then you start it up and let it warm up, make sure you got coolant flowing, make sure that the intercooler's bled out, and after that, you're ready to take it for a test drive. We noticed a dramatic improvement the first time we drove the car after putting it all back together. 
and uh, we allowed the customer to put a few miles on it to break in the supercharger. Magnuson recommends, you know, a thousand miles or so to make sure everything's happy. We didn't have any problems. I noticed, uh, first of all, that the center force clutch, the pedal effort's about the same, but the grab point is very different, and it's actually a little touchy until it's broken in, trying not to get it to chatter. Uh, the supercharger was an immediate difference. Even driving the car gently during the supercharger's break-in period, you could tell that there was a lot more this car had to give. We took it back to the chassis dyno to see what kind of improvement we made, and uh, we were very pleasantly surprised. And, and we were there not just to get power numbers. We brought along a wideband air fuel meter so that we could verify the uh, air fuel ratio was safe uh, with the tune-up that we installed. We also used an HP tuner device to data log and monitor all the functions of the vehicle to make sure that, again, everything was happy. Uh, when I drove the car in the road simulation mode, I was watching our wideband meter that I had stuck up on the tachometer of the car, and the air-fuel curve seemed to be working really well. We had a nice 14 and a half or so under cruise. Uh, you lean on a little bit, it goes into the 13s, and you get it into boost, and it was in the high 12s. Knowing that information, we thought it was a good opportunity to do a pull on it and see what kind of power it was making and watch the air fuel curve all the way through the boost and all the way through the RPM range. And when it was time to put the hammer down, uh, we were rewarded with over a hundred horsepower increase uh, than the baseline performance number. So the first pull of the car made 408 horsepower at about 5200 RPM. The second pull we wound it up a little higher, it made 412 at about 5,500 RPM. During the power pull, we noticed in the upper RPM range that we had a slight dip in the power. So we went back and reviewed the log, uh, but it appeared based on RPM and airflow that we probably hit the seven pound boost valve. So the power dropped off and then it continued to climb after that. After knowing that the air fuel curve was safe to drive it, on the way back from the dyno shop, I felt a little more confident putting my foot to the floor in it, and this thing is pretty phenomenal for a 281 cubic inch Mustang. I like the sound of the car. It's uh, actually not that loud, but it definitely has a nice MagnaFlow sound to it. As we're looking at probably 450 horsepower at the motor, and when it when you get up into about 3,500, 4,000 RPM, you need to hang on with this. Thing. You can see more of this car and learn about the parts we used on our shop's website. A little different address this time. It's v8speedshop.com.